audition for the role of Zoe in Hannah Montana. I don't think anyone did anything to ever intentionally, you know, abuse me as a child to work because I wanted to do it. But the schedule now, if you would look at this for one of your own children, I think you would be kind of in shock. I don't want to be anyone that gets too stuck in feeling like, you know, I'm someone's little puppet. I never want to be that way. This thing, if it goes, as big as it seems like it has the potential to go, This child's life will never be the same. Hi, I'm Jake. And I'm Shelby. And welcome to a very special installment of Deep Dive. Today, we are going to tackle a story we've wanted to share with y'all since we started this channel, Miley, Miley Cyrus. Cyrus. Miley Cyrus absolutely dominated the Disney Channel for years, becoming the most prolific and popular Disney Channel star of all time. But the fame came with a dire price tag as Miley was also the most underpaid and overworked Disney Channel star of all time. Disney would generate billions of dollars, creating the very image Miley Cyrus would one day need to shatter without repair. But I'm getting too far ahead of myself. So the holidays are right around the corner, and Shelby and I haven't looked up from our laptops in actual days in preparation for the avalanche of videos you're about to encounter. So we had HelloFresh deliver meals right to our front door so that we can spend less time meal planning and more time diving deep into the topics we're actually interested in. We are letting HelloFresh take things off our plates by letting them figure out what should go on them. It's like an actual serve. HelloFresh is a service that I love. I have used HelloFresh frequently to take the guesswork out of feeding my family a healthy meal, saving me tons of money I would have spent on takeout. It's clear when I open my box that HelloFresh prioritizes freshness and quality of ingredients. Everything you get in your box is farm fresh, portioned perfectly, and ready to use. And my favorite part is picking my recipes every single week. So cozy up with a HelloFresh seasonal recipe and let them free up some of your time this holiday season. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code DEEPDIVE70 for 70% off plus free shipping. So no matter your skill level, from beginner to someone who knows their way around a kitchen, HelloFresh sends easy to follow recipe cards that will turn you into a home chef in no time. So don't forget, for 70% off with HelloFresh plus free shipping, use code DEEPDIVE70 at HelloFresh.com. Anyway, let's get into just how Miley said Cyrus's life began and the tumultuous journey that brought her worldwide fame. November 23, 1992, in the charming suburbs of Franklin, Tennessee, Billy Ray and Tish Cyrus would welcome their first child together into the world, a daughter by the name of Destiny Hope Cyrus. Now married to Letitia Finley Cyrus, the mother of his young daughter, Billy Ray has a whole new lease on life. Miley is actually Destiny Hope. When I found out I was going to have a little girl, I, I just felt there again inside my intuition that it was going to be this little girl's destiny to bring a lot of hope to the world. And Miley has evolved from Smiley because she didn't cry hardly ever and when she was born. And she just goes crazy. She loves to dance, and the more people clap for her, the, the more she'll dance. And I think she's got the Cyrus virus. Ray, Billy Ray says he's even toning down his sexy stage act. Where I used to go on stage and pick up bras and panties and, and all these things, now I go and pick up, you know, stuffed animals or just, you know, the fans have adopted my family as their family and that means that they, that they truly love me, not, not for being the achy breaky man. Growing up on a 500-acre ranch with her brothers and sisters on the outskirts of Nashville, Miley was never far from the limelight. Miley and I want to take you guys around my favorite little part of Nashville. It's called Franklin. All right, fork it up, lady. Oh, bam. <laughs> I'm nervous for some reason. I don't like small crowds. I'm a nervous wreck. You don't like small crowds, people. Mm. That's easy because you can't see their face.
when you come to Tennessee, you'll fall in love with what you see and what you feel. It's a really special place, a lot of heart and soul. And, you know, right now we're seven miles away from my farm where Miley was raised. You know, Tennessee's not just where I'm from, it's, it's really part of who I am. My top five at being on the farm and being at home, you know, certainly uh, starts early in the morning. If I can walk with my dogs, you know, go see the hawks. Nobody loves a beautiful sunset more than me. Any day I'm here, if I can get on top of the hill and, and uh, see the sun set, and that's what life's about to me. That's poetry in motion. It's important to be aware of your surroundings and where you're at. Always be looking forward and know where you want to go, but most importantly, never forget where you come from. During her childhood, the star's father, Billy Ray, was a prominent name in the world of country music, taking both country and rock scenes by storm as his song Achy Breaky Heart soared to platinum status only three months after its release in 1982, just prior to the birth of Miley. The single that launched his career, however, did not debut without controversy, causing much backlash from his very own music scene due to the general simplicity and two-chord progression of the catchy smash hit. The reigning queen of country music herself, Dolly Parton, was not phased by the criticism Billy Ray was receiving and invited him to open for her on her tour. First of all, it's, it's a pleasure for me to be able to work with you. And it's always kind of awkward when you're talking to your friends because you don't want to get too mushy and you don't want to get you know, too involved with it. But there's a lot of special things about you that a lot of people don't realize. Only because you're so good looking and so talented and you're kind of new on the scene, there's a lot of stuff that goes on, like with, we won't mention names, but a lot of guys say this and that, but I have to honestly say to the folks out there, this is one of the nicest, sweetest people that you would ever want to meet, and I think all that stuff's just jealousy. In the coming years, Dolly would even take on the role of being Miley's own godmother. During her most formative years, Miley was very close with her father, tagging along with him to his various work endeavors. Whether it was interviews, backstage of music tours, or on the set of his on-screen appearances, Miley spent her youth capering a about the entertainment field, even snagging her first acting role on her dad's own TV drama, Doc. Tiny Todd idolizing her country star papa. We like to watch extra, don't we? You like extra? Uh -huh. Assistant is here. I haven't, yeah. You want to introduce her? Okay, hey Miley, come on out. This is your Miley. daughter, Miley. Yeah, yeah come on, Miley. <laughs> <laughs> come on out, Miley. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, she is absolutely gorgeous. Hello, my girl. Hi, oh, How are you, dear? I when, love her. When she heard it was uh -oh. your birthday this morning, I was leaving the house, and she said, please, Daddy, let hey, me turn come. Around. And turn around so we can see you. And okay. I, there you, go. you know, I asked her, uh, she wanted to bring a present to you, so she's... Yeah. Isn't she getting bigger, isn't she's she? She's a she big is. girl. I used to be able to pick her up without any help. Uh -huh. What did you bring me, me Miley? Here, I'll hold this for you. I'm so happy to see you, you pretty What'd you girl. Bring? Okay. There's a hat. Oh, I got a Billy Ray Cyrus shot full of love hat. Okay. <gasps> and what else you got oh, here? Oh, a shirt. Did I get one of Daddy's mm -hmm. shirts? Oh, Miley. Did you see all the characters you get a chance to meet uh, Pooh and Tigger and all those guys? Good. Boy, yeah. she's she's feeling really good about this today because Brazen Chance, her little brother, mm -hmm. went to the dentist with Instead AJ. Of this? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, Miley's here with Winnie the Pooh and Rugrats and Yeah. You got the best end of the deal there, Miley. Okay, well you stick around and have some fun. How is it, Tish? Now that you're up here under the lights and the cameras, we've been telling everybody this is your very first television appearance. So what were you nervous about? Everything. I'm I'm actually pretty calm. I thought I was going to be much more nervous. I think it's you guys. Oh, it's not. No, yeah. wait a minute. You, now, we see, we've known Billy Ray for years. Now, Billy Ray, did she ask you anything about us before she came over here uh -huh. tonight? I'll be honest, she was so excited. Who wants to tell the story of how the two of you met? Tish, do you remember? I do. We met in 1991, and he was playing a little club in Huntington, West Virginia, the Ragtime Lounge. That's right, okay. And I just went with my friends, uh, three other my friends. We went every night. Had, and you, had you heard of Billy Ray at that point? He was very famous in our area, okay. but actually, he's going to kill me. I was so young, I couldn't get into clubs. <laughs> <laughs> he had been playing clubs the whole time. I was in high school, but then um, my friends and I would go to the Ragtime, and we would be so depressed if, we, if there was a reason we could not go. I mean, we were huge fans. And I probably went to the ragtime for a month before we actually
actually met. Really? Uh, no, so, so now, Billy Ray, did you see her in the crowd, or how, or how did that happen? She, uh, first of all, uh, one night she came up and mentioned a song called It Ain't Over Till It's Over, and uh, she mentioned how much she uh, liked that song and the record, and uh, we just started uh, conversing and, and uh, became friends. All right, well, Tish, what do you think about the lifestyle of these big-time entertainers? Here he is in Washington, D.C. at the inaugural. You know, he's been touring the world, selling millions of albums and all that, yet you guys have your little corner of the world out there. We do. It's great. It's like our own private retreat, and I have to admit, it took me a long time to get used to the lifestyle. This is the man I met. He was driving like around in a bread truck. So <laughs> when I met him, he was actually like living out of his car. So, I mean, it, it's a big change, but it's great, and I don't know if you know, but I'm the president of his fan club now. You should be. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, the fan club gets involved yeah. as well. You're president of the fan club, and they're always trying to. This is probably the on. most asked question that we get, yeah. is how can we help Billy get airplay? Because they miss hearing him on the radio. Sure. But that's the only thing we can do, is just keep calling the radio stations. Through every storm in each and every... Past and the love we found Just will not let me go Have a little seat, you want to say hi? Oh, I think, uh, I think Miley's uh, got something special she was on. You want to go ahead and do it for him now? All right, here, come up here and stand. Now, folks, stand back because you're going to get something here that just can't find anywhere else but Thompson Station. <laughs> This changed the course of Miley's development as she was constantly surrounded by nothing but actors and the sound of music. This is where Miley really got her passion for singing and acting, and she was very adamant from a young age that this is what she wanted to pursue. Number one, full Okay, wait. Okay, wait. Okay, do you want to slave dance? Slave! I never get tired, I never had to die. Slay! Bye now! See me right now. You can't. Go, Mom, go, you can't right now. Scoot back so we can see you. Sing it, Ma! Ha! Everything's always been a big joke that you had to make. Ha ha! Isn't it You listen to me, you fool. We tried. We failed. It's hard. Come look. No, you look. Billy and Tish enrolled their daughter in creative lessons in the Armstrong Acting Studio in Toronto. And just one decade after Miley emerged from the womb, she landed her first role as Ruthie in the smash hit cult classic, Big Fish. When Miley was nearing 11 years old, a few friends from school said they were venturing to Los Angeles, California to audition for the Disney Channel. Miley relentlessly begged her mother Tish to go to the auditions, and Tish agreed for her to go. Tish, Miley, and her grandmother would then embark on the three-day road trip from Tennessee to California, so Miley could audition for a new Disney Channel show in development called Hannah Montana. Now, Miley was originally auditioning for a completely different role on the show. I'm Miley Cyrus, I'm with CED, and I'm auditioning for the role of Zoe in Hannah Montana. Bye, bye, how could I let you go? I'm a Mia, here I go again. Bye-bye, how can I resist ya? Her star power was evident in her audition tape as Miley competed against a thousand other girls for Hannah Montana. It's your red sweater, but you gotta admit it looks way better on me than you, and That's in two months, Zoe. And if you think my sweater looks way better on you, why did you give it to me for Christmas? Because you're always borrowing my clothes, and I feel bad because I never bought yours because you have nothing I like. So I got this for you, so you have something I like and I could borrow and I'll make you feel better. This is so sweet. After Disney became aware of Miley's various acting and singing abilities, they knew immediately she was a star. 
Disney Channel executives would immediately reach out to Tish and Billy to let them know they were interested in producing their daughter into the next star of the Disney Channel. Miley went to several callback auditions over the course of many months. However, Disney executives ultimately decided that she was too young for the role. First, I auditioned for the TV show, and they said that I was too small and too young. And no, seriously. And then uh, they said I was too small, too young. And then I was like, "Didn't you know that from the first take?" Yeah, they would have seen that. Yeah. Before. So then um, they kind of like kicked me to the curb, and I just kept sitting in takes and takes and more takes. The uh, I tried to get you know more makeup, higher heels to look older. You look a bit older. And uh, it didn't. It didn't work. And then. You know, they kept saying, yeah, well, you're good, but you're just not old enough. And then a couple months go by and they still haven't found the girl yet. And then they asked me to come to California. What many don't know is the role almost went to someone else entirely. According to Miley, they created an entirely different Secret Life pop star pilot that didn't feature Miley Cyrus at all in favor of a different pop star entirely. They hired someone else. They shot a pilot. They went and showed the pilot to a bunch of kids. How, how long were you going back? So it, from the time I was uh, probably like 10, 10 and a half, and I booked it when I was 12. So between two years. Two years of auditioning? Two years of auditioning. My, and not me? getting the part. And then they showed it to these, you know, they showed it to kids. They'll do those like kind of screenings and see if people are resonating and relating to the characters. So the show was in development for two and a half years? Yeah. While you were going back wow. and forth. It's kind of like a, almost like a Ferris Bueller, like Max's big day off. So I thought for sure I had got the role. Finally, Disney would call Miley back to do a final audition. And after months and months of dangling the show over her head, the role of Hannah Montana was finally hers. However, not without significant changes. For starters, the name Hannah Montana. The Disney Channel would settle on either the name Chloe or Zoe, with the pop star persona being named Alexis Texas to match. That is until Disney Channel realized the name Alexis Texas was already in use by a highly prolific adult film star, and they didn't want children to be shocked by the search results. Thus, they switched the name to the quippy, catchy, and iconic Hannah Montana. Disney wanted to make an actress into a real-life personable pop star, so they swapped the name Chloe in favor of Miley's actual nickname. They even went as far as to have Miley's real-life father, Billy Ray, audition to play the role of her father on Hannah Montana. <laughs> As big as it seems like it has the potential to go, this child's life will never be the same. And on March 24th, 2006, 13 year old Miley Cyrus would make Disney Channel rating history and debut to 5.4 million viewers on the brand new smash hit show, Hannah Montana. You have to be really great to win a Teen Choice Award for being a music artist. And you also have to be really great to win a Teen Choice Award for being a movie star or for being a TV star. But no one in Teen Choice history has ever won awards in all three categories in the same year. Until now. Late for my flight to Japan. Hop off the jet when it goes to your man. Under my pants like a stand. Head to Miami, say hi to my fans. Show us the coast now. marked a major shift for the Disney Channel as they decided to go a more musical route. High School Musical and Hannah Montana were released just months apart, and both would become billion-dollar franchises. 
Disney Channel was seeing success like they had never seen before. This new wave of Disney Channel stars would experience their lives changing overnight, as their fame rocketed off at a faster rate than any of their predecessors. And Disney Channel was ready to cash in. In previous episodes of our series, The Disney Channel Machine, we have dove into how child stars are often overworked. Child stars have to balance long work hours on set, PR tours to promote their shows, media training to uphold the Disney image, and three to four hours of schoolwork daily. Do you go to school or do you have a tutor? Yeah, I have to do school on every you day. School? Yeah. You do? You, you go, go to regular, regular school? school? Uh, I go uh, once a week, I go to a normal school and make sure that I'm training my work and everything. and. Making sure that I can balance the two, because that, that's the rule. I have to balance school and acting. This leaves little room for these child stars to just be kids. However, Miley Cyrus may be one of the most overworked child stars in Disney Channel history. My mom also had, was amazing, and she archived and kept everything from like all my schedules, all everything. Six weeks ago, I found this schedule, one of the first times I'd ever traveled to promote Hannah Montana. I was only probably like 12 years old and we were going to Europe and um, they had even had like nap time built in the schedule for me because I was a child. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I looked at the schedule, I felt like this coat of like armor came on to protect my uh, like, innocent self that still lives because actually when I looked at that schedule it upset me because I felt that it wasn't really considering my best interest. I don't think anyone did anything to ever intentionally you know abuse me as a child to work because I wanted to do it but the schedule now if you would look at this for one of your own children I think you would be kind it's, of in it shock. Was, it's insane due to the nature of Hannah Montana. Miley had two personas in the show, the first being Miley Stewart, where she lives a typical teen girl life by day, and by night she is pop star sensation Hannah Montana. Having these two personas would increase a then 12-year-old Miley Cyrus's workload substantially. In the limo, in the limo, do interviews at the same time, get to the hotel, you know, become Hannah, do a concert, go to the studio. There was really, and then there was like 20 minutes for nap time and lunch, which we know that you cannot have lunch and take a nap as a child in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so just looking at those things, looking at the schedules, looking at, and also it said in the beginning of the agenda of the calendar, it said like, we think that if this week goes as planned, this is gonna be a really huge success. There was, there was no importance of sleeping or eating. And so that, at that age of 12 years old, taught me if you want to be successful, you can't sleep and you can't eat. Mm -hmm. And like, I guess as a child that made me, it didn't feel like that was best for me. Mm -hmm. And so by looking at that schedule and just putting my ego aside and going, that in some way affected me and hurt me. While filming Hannah Montana, it was reported that Miley Cyrus worked 12 hour days on set. Apparently, the hours were so long that her mom, Tish Cyrus, suggested bringing in special lights to help prevent seasonal affective disorder as Miley began having anxiety attacks. It was also reported that due to the long hours, Miley developed a vitamin D deficiency. In an interview, Miley said, Every morning I was getting coffee jammed down my throat to wake me up. I just had to keep going. Be tough. Be strong. Everything happened to me on that set. But the long work hours on set is just where Miley's insane workload begins. As soon as Disney Channel saw the success of Hannah Montana, they knew it was no longer just a TV show, but an entire franchise. Miley Cyrus wasn't just Hannah Montana on screen. She also had to take that persona out on the road, which would consume her every waking moment. Now, what must your life be like? Because I know these shows on the Disney Channel. I have three kids. I mean, they've become huge. Well, this is the number one show right now in, in that, that market. I, I learned what a tween was before I prepared for the show. 
So, <laughs> so I didn't know what that was until now, but yeah, it's the number one uh, kid. It's like totally crazy. Like I just flew out from LA to here, mm -hmm. and then um, once I'm done here, I fly out to Orlando for a concert. Mm -hmm. Then I fly back to LA, and then like that next Monday, I start shooting again. No wow. kidding. Yeah. Immediately, Disney had Miley opening for the 2006 Cheetah Girls tour as Hannah Montana to test her popularity in concert. Then within months of the show's release, they got Miley Cyrus in the studio to begin producing albums for the franchise. But because of the dual personas, Miley would need to produce two albums for every release. One side of the album would be Hannah Montana, and the other side would be Miley Cyrus. So tell me about the CD that you wrote yourself. I mean, that must be quite exciting. Yeah, I wrote seven of ten of the songs, which is really exciting for people to actually hear my work. And, um, and there's no character. You can't hide behind that. Is that exactly. That's what's nice, is there is no character, so people know who the real me is. In 2007, the first dual album released, and it even beat out Kelly Clarkson for the number one spot on the Billboard 200. The Hannah Montana album wasn't just being played in cars during school drop-off, it was reaching massive mainstream success, becoming certified triple platinum. Where were you the first time when you heard one of your songs on the radio? The first time that I heard my song on the radio, I was in my kitchen, and my godmother called me and was like, hey, um, we just heard Best of Both Worlds, come on, hurry up and put it on Radio Disney so you can listen to it. So me and my mom like ran over to the stereo and turned it up. We only got like the last 30 seconds of it, but it was so cool. And I remember the first time that they said my name, they're like, that's Miley Cyrus, it's Hannah Montana. I got so excited, like I couldn't believe it. And then the first time that I heard See You Again on the radio, when it was like my first like actual Miley song, I totally freaked out. My who, One of my friends heard it and was like, yo, you know, they're starting to play that on the radio. And when I was in the car and it came on, I was driving down the freeway with my mom and we turned it up as loud as we could. We we're like, it sounds even better on the radio. It's so cool. So um, I was super excited both times and I got to hear my Hannah Montana song and my Miley song. By this point, Miley had already filmed season two of Hannah Montana and was gearing up for a massive tour called The Best of Both Worlds to promote the dual album release. Is this true because it's her own show and she's got such long sets, it's more like I worry about her. I mean, I'm totally proud. She's an amazing performer that still is a mom. I mean, it's just like so nerve wracking. So actually, every time she changes clothes, um, I'm the one backstage changing her clothes. What? It's crazy. There's three of us, but I think been. because they're pretty timid with, you know, her because they don't know her as well. I mean, I'm like ripping her clothes off and it's so funny. And she's like, Mom! We, of course, banter back and forth. You know, it's so funny back there because there's one change. Like, I have to get her changed in, what, 30, 30 seconds? 37 yeah. seconds, I think, is. Yeah, like, we literally, it has to be choreographed to where we know what we take off first. Like left foot, right foot in, skirt out first. And then we have hair and makeup people who, while we're changing her, they're like trying to do a little bit with their hair and you know, but that's crazy. Tickets immediately sold out and were being scalped for upwards of $2,000 per ticket. Parents were outraged and the demand for Hannah Montana tickets made national news. I was trying to get Hannah Montana concert tickets. <laughs> and I thought it would be easy with those Hannah Montana fans are rabid like dogs. Whoa, 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 hey, whoa. Is, is this one of those Hannah Montana girls? Well, who in the world gives a little girl a medieval sword? Who does that? What is she? Kiki, you don't know what these fans are like. Hand over those Hannah Montana tickets, you bitch! Whoa, whoa. Hannah Montana! Hannah Montana! Kids go crazy for her. And the Disney show. Hannah Montana. It's no wonder tickets to her December concert at U.S. Bank Arena are hot and hard to get. And I haven't ever seen anything like this for a concert before. Tickets go on sale tomorrow morning, but persistent parents have been trying for weeks online. I don't know. I wouldn't want to go any more than $100 probably a ticket. But her daughter's Hannah Love will have Rachel trying for tickets till the end. Kroger stores with Ticketmaster stations are bracing for big crowds. If you miss out and still want to go, be prepared to pay big, as much as $1,000 a ticket. We are going on tour 
and the tickets sold out in, in like crazy in just a few minutes, right? Yeah. I and it's huge say. arenas. It's it's not like small places. They're like 15,000 seat arenas. Yeah. And, it's, and, I'm uh, nervous. <laughs> yeah. Well, you shouldn't be nervous. But now, I guess they're saying that it's that scalpers bought up all the tickets and now they're charging a fortune for tickets and these poor people are, can't bring their kids or I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, Molly's doing the, the concert and the tour for the fans and it is sad that, um, you know, she's putting all this work behind it and, and really wanted to go out and make as many families and as many kids happy as possible and it's, right. it's sad that with the internet the scalpers got to hold the tickets first. The uproar over the sale of some Hannah Montana tickets could be headed to court. The Missouri Attorney General has taken aim at ticket brokers filing suit. But as KMBC 9's Jim Flink reports, two brokers avoided a costly court battle today by giving up their tickets. He's saying they had hijacked Hannah Montana tickets trying to make a load of cash on the secondary market. Today, Missouri's Attorney General announced the results of lawsuits against a couple of major ticket brokers taking 90 tickets from those ticket brokers and turning them over to four local charities that help kids. I see from Dad and all the other concerts that I've got to see, you know, other Disney stars do. What the kids get most excited about is when they feel like you're talking to them personally. How many of you guys think you guys are the biggest Hannah Montana fans? The first day I didn't really know what was going on. I just heard, okay, well it's sold out in, you know, less than a half hour. We were just freaking out because I had no idea it was this big. When it's your own tour and you see your name on the tickets and you see what's going on and everyone wants to see you perform, that's what's the most incredible thing. The Best of Both Worlds tour was insanely successful. Miley, at just 14 years old, performed a total of 71 shows in just 100 days, grossing over $54 million. You know, I sat in a room with the piano and did scales and shit. Good, 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 good. But no one taught me about how do you have longevity? You know, right. you are in here with athletes all the time, and, and recovery days are the most important days. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get recovery days. There, right. That was not important for someone that was making so much capital for such a big corporation. You know, the off days mm. are days that, that money's not coming in, and, and I, I definitely probably didn't get the training that I needed to say, hey, you know what, I don't want to do this till I'm 15. I want to do this till I'm 80. And that wasn't always considered. Disney even released the Best of Both Worlds 3D film to theaters, which grossed an additional $70.6 million at the box offices, setting a record for highest grossing concert film of all time. They even turned the Best of Both Worlds into a live soundtrack, which would then debut at number three on the Billboard 200. Disney was milking Miley and her live performances for every penny they could. Miley would only get a few weeks off as shortly after the tour ended, Miley began filming for the Hannah Montana movie. Here we go! in the movie, my character has always had the best of both worlds, but she'll have to choose just one. In her first big screen adventure, Hannah is headed to a place you've never seen before, her family home in Tennessee. Welcome to Tennessee. Looks like your limo's here. I know, I understand you just finished the movie, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so we're all very excited about the movie. Uh, what's going to be involved with that? What's the storyline? What's Hannah getting up to? Um, well, it releases um, in April, okay. so I'm not really sure what time here, but... How far away is that? I know, it's coming, it's coming. It'll be like two months afterwards, I'm sure. Was it cool making the film, though, actually being on a film set? It was well? awesome, and I was home in Tennessee, so I was like so happy. I got to like hang out and ride horses every day, and it was beautiful, I was so excited. Filming for the Hannah Montana movie wrapped in July of 2008, and immediately the next month, August 2008, Miley began filming for season three of Hannah Montana. You're kind of like the busiest teenager in the world, I think. Yes, I got here. I uh, was in London, then I went to Berlin. I'm in London, of course, today. Then go to Paris in a couple hours, back to London, and then back to LA to shoot season three. Which is, we're all very excited here, aren't we? Season three of Hannah Montana, obviously. 
But guys, can't wait to see that. The amount of work Miley was doing at such a young age was unprecedented. No other Disney child star prior to Miley had this level of pressure and expectations. When hundreds of millions of dollars started rolling in, Disney no longer viewed Miley as Miley. She was just Hannah Montana, a product they could sell to the masses. Due to the very nature of the show's entire storyline, Miley didn't just have to play a character living a double life, she had to live it as well. And it would begin taking its toll on Miley. There was so much focus on who I, who I was at a time, which was a character. Um, and there were, again, a lot of my, my value as a human was chalked up to that, you know, to Hannah Montana, to that identity. So I got cast at 12 years old, and that's obviously just the spongiest, most absorbent time in your life. And again, a, a time of just self-discovery. And, um, you know, the concept of the show is that when I would alter my image and I would put on a wig and I would, you know, put on sparkly things that I held a new value, that I was valuable, um, it did translate into my real life there was a different level of like hysteria when Hannah Montana, I mean, it was actually kind of crazy being Hannah Montana. The way that kids would react at these like Hannah shows versus when I was myself and I would meet fans out it was it was different because my name was Miley on the show too which it wasn't you know when my when my friends from Nashville were going to audition obviously the the name wasn't Miley but I embodied the character so much that they the writers thought it made most sense for Hannah to be Miley because of how much I truly was the character wow. and it didn't really feel like a character I just said, okay, someone told me I'm Hannah Montana. I am now Hannah Montana. And anything that I create for her, I am in. It's like, it's beyond method because I was growing up as her, she was me. Like there was no divide between us. That's who I was. Disney began pumping out mass amounts of Hannah Montana merchandise. If you walked into a Walmart in 2008, you would see Hannah Montana clothing, school supplies, posters, bedding, pillows, many variations of Hannah Montana Barbies. They even sold Hannah Montana merch for dogs. It's incredible to me that, you know, it said that um, the Miley Cyrus brand will be worth approximately a billion dollars before you're 18 years old and your parents give you an allowance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I gotta keep you grounded, gotta keep you normal. Many would think a billion dollar franchise built partly off of Miley's name, her tours, album sales of music Miley wrote herself, and merchandise with her face all over it would translate to an exorbitant amount of wealth for Miley. But this actually couldn't be further from the truth. When Miley Cyrus sat down with Elle magazine for an exclusive interview later on in 2016, it was shocking to learn how little she was actually paid by Disney. Miley said, quote, I just wanted to be on TV. I mean, at one point, they'll probably kill me for saying it. I was probably the least paid person on my cast. I didn't know any better. I was just like, I can be on Disney. It was reported that Miley was making only $15,000 an episode. For comparison, the Sprouse twins together made $40,000 an episode for Sweet Life, Selena Gomez made $30,000 an episode for Wizards of Waverly Place, and Ashley Tisdale made $30,000 per episode of Phineas and Ferb. Miley's mom, Tish Cyrus, started to become concerned that Miley was being taken advantage of, as many child stars often are. They had let Disney use Miley's actual name for the show and didn't think much of it, but technically, Miley was a nickname and Destiny Hope was Miley's legal name. So essentially, Disney owned Miley's name and was profiting off of it, meanwhile paying Miley pennies compared to what they were bringing in. Sometime in 2008, Tish hired lawyers to protect her daughter's future by legally changing her name from Destiny Hope Cyrus to Miley Ray Cyrus. They then trademarked Miley Cyrus under Smiley Miley Incorporated to ensure Miley would have total ownership of her name, her music, and so she could start generating revenue streams outside of Disney. 
Did you get a shitty contract by uh, industry standards? Here you are, a kid trying to make it, so they can sign you for anything, right? Yeah, I actually, um, my name was Miley on the show. Right. So once I was done with the show, I had to make sure that I wasn't just, like, they owned Miley forever. Right. I have these nightmares that I have to go back that all of a sudden the show gets called back and I've somewhere signed saying, like, you know, a Scientologist billionaire contract that I've signed that somewhere. Um, and so I feel like I might just have to go back sometimes. I think the first thing, it was like the last season of my show. I put out, I can't be tamed. Which that, even just the title of that, for a woman to say that she can't be tamed, that's of all people in the world, my face saying I can't be tamed, and that's really all people wanted to do.